Welcome to Global Journeys with Jill Dutton, the podcast that transports you to captivating destinations around the globe. I'm your host, Jill Dutton, a passionate traveler and seasoned travel writer. In each episode, we delve into the heart of a destination with a unique blend of storytelling. Join me as we introduce you to fascinating individuals and explore the enchanted places they call home. To learn more about my writing and podcasting career, stay tuned until the end of the episode for more details. Now, let's embark on this global journey together, one person and place at a time. Today we have a special treat for all you adventure seekers. Joining us is Lee Livingston, the founder of Livingston Outfitting, based in the picturesque town of Cody, Wyoming. Cody, with its rugged landscapes, rich Western history, and unparalleled natural beauty, has become a must-visit destination for those craving an authentic outdoor experience. And who better to guide us through the wonders of Cody than Lee Livingston himself? a seasoned outdoorsman, and the heart and soul behind Livingston Outfitting. Today, we'll dive into the essence of Cody as a destination, exploring its unique charm, thrilling activities, and why it's a haven for outdoor enthusiasts. We'll also get an insider's look into the world of guided hunts and horseback trips with Lee, discovering the passion and dedication that go into creating unforgettable adventures for Livingston Outfitting clients. Whether you're a seasoned hunter a nature lover, or someone simply yearning for a taste of the Wild West, this episode promises to be a captivating journey into the heart of Cody, Wyoming, guided by a true expert. Lee Livingston was born in Cody, Wyoming, under the shadow of the Rocky Mountains. Shortly after high school, he combined his two passions, horses and the outdoors, and began a career as a professional wilderness guide. In addition to working in the mountains of northwest Wyoming, he was fortunate to be able to guide for four years in central Alaska. In 1995, he started his own outfitting business, and today, with the help of his grown children, Livingston Outfitting has become one of the premier horseback outfitting businesses in Wyoming. So saddle up and get ready for an episode filled with tales of the untamed frontier, the thrill of the hunt, and the beauty that awaits in Cody. Without further ado, let's jump into this exciting conversation with Lee Livingston of Livingston Outfitting. Lee, thank you for joining me today. You're welcome. First, let's talk briefly about Cody as a destination, and then we'll dive into your work with Livingston Outfitting. Sounds good. (laughs) What is it that you believe makes Cody such a unique and compelling destination for travelers? Well, you know, the obvious is we're the East Gate of Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. And it's we're not as uh, fancy or or touristy, I believe, as Jackson. There's a a lot of good stuff to do around Cody. A lot of history in Cody. Yes. Started by Buffalo Bill. There's old trail town there which has historical buildings from all over wyoming and the west okay. um, it's grave grave of jeremiah livery and johnson is there mm-hmm. the museum itself is five museums under one roof the buffalo bill center of the west oh. and the, a world-renowned museum wonderful so there's and you've got the road stuff. the rodeo as well <laughs> right actually sit on the on the board for the rodeo Oh, fantastic. I, I visited um, about a year or so ago, and we really enjoyed the rodeo. That was a fun fun event. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been around a long time. Mm-hmm. Well, can you share, I guess, some of your your favorite personal spots, or maybe, you know, how would you spend a perfect day when you're not working? Well, that's kind of hard. I was born there, um, been there all my life, and so it's it's kind of my backyard. Uh-huh. Uh, not a, I'm not a town person. I generally like to be be outdoors, and there is a lot of that around Cody. Yes. But it's spending my day not working. I haven't had one of those in a long time. So I'm not... <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> so, okay. So basically, I guess in your free time, it's it's getting outdoors and enjoying that beautiful nature that you have there. It is. It is. Okay. Well then, so how did you start Livingston Outfitting? Was it, how did it come to be? Was it inspired 
you know, what inspired you to start a business in guided hunts and horseback trips? It was kind of just by chance. I grew up with horses. My mom always had horses around the place. And then I did spend a little bit of time down in Oklahoma on a ranch with my with my mom and my stepdad. And, and the horses were a, a daily part of life on the ranch. Mm-hmm. And then as a teenager, I thought I was going to do everything I could to stay away from them. But uh, that didn't work out so well. And <laughs> I got a job the summer after I graduated high school. I got a job doing trail rides, the one hour, two hour trail rides off the highway from between Cody and Yellowstone. Okay. And a guy that had an outfit, a hunting camp up the, uh, up the North Fork, that's the North Fork, the Shoshone between Cody and Yellowstone would stop by. There was a local watering hole where I did the rides Mm -hmm. and he'd by on his way home or, or to camp, and he offered me a job that that fall as a Wrangler hunting camp, and I never really thought about it, never really done any stuff, anything like that. I'd been to hunting camp with my stepdad when I was, you know, like nine, ten years old and on horseback, but I'd never thought of it as a career. Right. So I, that was 1985, and I started working in that camp, and, you know, 30 some odd years later, here I am. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, then can you give us an overview maybe of the types of outdoor experiences and adventures that that guests might receive? I mean, I know they could choose from the two different ones and we'll talk about each specifically, but I'm just kind of curious, you know, what is it that draws people to come to to uh, Livingston out, Outfitting? Well, we're we're a horseback outfit and you know the the mountains around Cody. There's offer a lot of a lot to see, and I've always said the best way to see it is from the back of a horse. Mm-hmm. It's a way to get away from it all, to get into the into the backcountry, into the wilderness, and I think that's what draws people. We saw a big uptick during and after COVID, yeah, of people wanting to reconnect with the outdoors, and there's not really a better way to do it than than to do it horseback. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Do the changing seasons, you know, I mean, you're in, in Wyoming, do, do the changing seasons affect your tours and the activities that you offer? Is it seasonal? It is seasonal. Everything about my business is seasonal. We have what we call summer season and hunting season. Mm-hmm. And the summer trips, they range everything from a family wanting to just explore the outdoors and uh, maybe do a little fishing to folks that want to come specifically for fishing will have groups that that is the the uh, key part of their trip Mm -hmm. gear our trip around that Um, we'll have folks that want to do extended trips through the mountains i have a couple of different options we have options where we can go to a, a preset camp my hunting camp gets set up at the starting at the beginning of summer, and we use that throughout the summer. Mm-hmm. Then I have trip where we take a camp with us, and we'll ride to a destination, set up camp, and we can stay there for the duration of the trip and ride and hike from that that site. And then we also have trips where we um, take camp with us, and we move to multiple campsites and do a loop through the through the back country. Wonderful. And on the hunting trips, are there specific types of game that you're, I mean, I, I know it's seasonal, like deer season and things like that, but I mean, what is local to the area and what are what are you specifically? The, the, the thing we, we, the animal we hunt the most is elk. Mm-hmm. That's our, that's our mainstay. We have three weeks or three weeks of rifle elk season. We have two weeks of archery elk season. Uh, we do the occasional deer hunt. We do the occasional bighorn sheep hunt, but but elk is the mainstay. And about how long is a typical guided hunt? Guided hunts in the backcountry with me are seven days. Seven days, okay. And yeah. do you have? This is just curiosity, but do you have a particular favorite elk recipe? Do you like to cook with elk? Oh, I love elk. There's nothing better, nothing better than elk steak on the grill. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> 
Wonderful. Okay, let's see. And then the horseback trips. Go ahead. Back what? To the other trips that we do that's a kind of a specialty trip is we do a grizzly bear viewing trip and we'll take during the summer we can go to sites where you can view grizzly bears with spotting scopes from a from a safe distance mm. and then we've had trips where we've seen 28 bears in a day wow oh that's amazing they're that, neat they're a uh, lot of what keep this wild mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's wonderful i'm in kansas so i'm i'm odd <laughs> you know by the, the opportunity to see see live bear Okay, on your horseback trips then. So, you know, that's a classic Western adventure. Can, you know, what can guests expect during a horseback trip, especially if they're new to horseback riding? Is that an option? We we have good gentle horses and mules, and obviously that's there you're going to be riding. Mm -hmm. uh, we again, we tailor our trips. Folks that show up and said, I want to see a lot of wildflowers, and there's a time of year when those are really, really heavy. And places we can go where we can see that. I have folks that show up and they say we want to see, you know, a lot of wildlife, and we'll tailor the trip towards towards that. You know, another trip I do is I do what are called horse supported hikes, mm -hmm. where folks that don't want to ride or folks that have been backpackers their entire life have hit that point in time where that carrying a sixty pound pack through the mountains isn't all that much fun anymore. Yeah. And so we will let those folks will hike and we, we pack all the gear on the horses and we kind of leapfrog over them. They'll get up in the morning and, and take off hiking and we'll pack up camp and then pass them sometime during the day and camp will be all set up when they, when they reach the destination. And are those typically seven days as well? Or do you have like one day outings and multi-day outings? The shortest trip I really like to do is the shortest is four days mm -hmm. you kind of you if especially if you're going to try to get anywhere you need a day to get somewhere to camp and then you know maybe a couple of days around camp and then a day a day coming out so we try to we try to not go any shorter than four days we've done we've done trips that have been 14 days mm -hmm. and back when i was first starting the uh longer trips were the norm it seems like in this fast-paced world we're living in now, if folks want to do things and do them fast, they don't have as much time to spend on leisure activities, I guess. That's true. That's true in the slower pace. So I guess to give someone a visual of you know what it's, what it's like, so do you provide the camping equipment and do you set we, up camp? Yes, we, we provide everything, food, camp gear we ask that folks bring their own sleeping bags and sleeping pads mm -hmm. do it all um we also have folks that want to step in and help so people can help as much or as little as they want to we've had folks show up and want to learn about packing the horses and mules oh, and we'll yeah. take time to to show them and i've had some folks that shown up that have done a little bit of it and by the end of the uh, end of the trip they're doing as much as the crew Interesting. And, and what what's kind of the menu that you serve? You know, I mean, is it campfire cooking or in the summertime? You know, that's part of the ambiance of the uh, of the trip is mm -hmm. is campfire cooking. And it also honestly is easier for us not to have to pack fuel for stoves and stoves. Yes, ninety nine percent of our summer cooking is done over the fire. We we pack a little propane burner just for uh for heating up coffee quick in the morning or emergency type situation mm -hmm. but but the menu you know steaks is pretty much always on the menu you have burgers and brats there'll be a pasta dish it's it's good food my daughter is my lead cook on all of my summer trips now and uh, she can put some pretty good groceries out there <laughs> it sounds delicious right. and Breakfast. Pardon? Breakfast is always egg, fruit. You know, you'll have pancakes or French toast, sausage, bacon. It's it's funny. Folks show up on the trip and they're not they don't think they're big eaters, but you get out there in the mountains, it changes. Yes. The mountain air and the physical exertion. I bet. I bet. And I bet there's nothing better than just that 
coffee and, <laughs> and eggs in the morning, you know, outside. So, you know, you've got this Western history and, you know, what sort of role do the your experiences, you know, that you offer, how do you incorporate that local culture into your guided trips? Are you able to do that? And, or are there just particular routes that are more stunning or, you know, I mean, are, I guess the whole experience, I'm trying to figure out even what I'm trying to say here. You know, you've got that whole Western cowboy kind of thing. So you've got that already going on with the horses and the, the campfire and things like that. So I'm just curious, are, are there other ways that you're incorporating the culture into the guides? Well, there is because, Joe, there's trails out there that were traveled by the early explorers. There's trails out there that were traveled by Jim Coulter that we're still traveling. Mm. The trails and the, out there that are traveled by the uh, Native Americans uh -huh. yeah, hundreds of years before we ever showed up. We, uh, we find uh, artifacts all over up there in the mountains, and it's kind of interesting the Native Americans, when the ones that were horse people needed the exact same stuff we need, they need a flat spot preferably, they need water close by, and they need feed for their horses. And so when you start going up at those campsites, it's not unusual to find artifacts, Native artifacts around those campsites. How interesting. And is there a particularly memorable guest or experience that someone had on one of your trips that you could share? Well, I'd say the most memorable guest I've had was Prince Albert of Monaco. Really? Oh, how interesting. Yeah. He, he came out in 2013. It marked the 100th anniversary since his great-great-grandfather, the other pr former Prince Albert, mm -hmm. pulled to Wyoming and hunted with Buffalo Bill in a camp that I used to have. They After they hunted it, they called it Camp Monaco. Mm -hmm. uh, Prince Albert came out for that 100-year anniversary, and then we took uh, him and a large group of folks on a short ride, and then he wanted to come back and see Camp Monaco, where his great-great-grandfather had hunted. And so a couple years later, he and us three friends came out and we uh, took him back to Camp Monaco and I had a, a great time, great trip. Oh, how interesting. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. And, you know, is there any sort of preparation someone should make before, you know, before they embark on one of your guided hunts or horseback trips? Well, I think the biggest mistake that folks make when they sign up for a horseback trip is they think it might be like riding a, an ATV. You just get on and sit there and ride horseback, mm -hmm. right? The physical activity and our trips and our hunts are, you need to be in d decent physical shape to go on them. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get away from having sore muscles because they're muscles that 99% of the fo folks aren't using on a daily basis when you climb on a horse. But that's that's just part of it. But just being in, in good physical shape um, is going to make your experience a lot more enjoyable. I bet. I bet that helps a lot. Okay. And let me see here. So looking ahead, are there new adventures or experiences on the horizon that, you know, potential clients can look forward to or any anything new or changing? Not much changing. No, we're, we're always looking for new places to go. But again, I've been in it for 30 some years and it, and it, uh, you get, you're, I'm going to the same places. They're not new to me, but they're new to most folks that go with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Sorry. it just occurred to me, are these normally booked by groups of people or could, you know, just a couple come and join another group? Exactly. Both. Oh, oh, that's good to know. Okay. I'm working on one of those trips right now. I have a, I have a 10 day trip that goes um, to the headwaters of the Yellowstone mm -hmm. and I have a couple from New Mexico that have just booked that trip. And what I do is I'll have folks call up that are interested interested or email that are interested, and I'll start building a trip. I also have families or groups that call up, and they've already got their group, and we book the trip just for them. I don't have cookie-cutter trips. There are some outfits that have trip A, trip B, trip C, and this is when these trips leave, and Okay. You're at 
those trips or you don't go at all. I Again, I try to tailor my trips to the client's needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excellent. And again, how long have you been doing this, offering these guided tours? Yeah, that's makes me think. I actually started professionally in 1985, mm-hmm. and I've had my own own outfit since 1995. Wow, that's impressive. And obviously, you don't lead every <laughs> tour, so you you have experienced guides. I'm getting to where I don't. I don't. I have. If I didn't have my kids, I'd be, I'd be in trouble. Mm-hmm. My daughter and her partner are a main part of the crew, and my middle son is a, a big part of my crew as well. Mm-hmm. And they out of the their movement towards doing more of the logistics and taking the trips. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, final question, I guess is: Is there anything else that you'd like our listeners to know that I might not have thought to ask about? You know either about Cody or Livingston Outfitting or, you know, just the incredible experiences that you provide? I think we've covered it all. I welcome anyone that wants to come see Cody and come see the mountains. And how far in advance would someone book one of these trips? My hunting trips, I some of my hunts are booked out through 26. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, summer trips are booked the year of or sometimes the year before. Okay. Okay. That sounds great. Well, Lee, thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining me and educating us about what you offer. So um, I can't wait to return. I I absolutely loved Cody, Wyoming during my visit. And I would love to come back at some point and and see what you've got going on there as well. We'd be glad to have you. Thank you, Joe. Wonderful. Thank you, Lee. Enjoy the rest of your day. Welcome to Global Journeys with Jill Dutton, the captivating travel podcast that takes you on an extraordinary adventure around the world. I'm your host, Jill Dutton, and I am thrilled to be your guide through the mesmerizing tapestry of cultures, landscapes, and experiences that await us. Global Journeys with Jill Dutton is more than just a travel podcast. It's an exploration of humanity itself. Through the power of storytelling, we illuminate the lives of the remarkable individuals we encounter along the way. Whether it's through the eyes of a fishing guide, a distillery owner, a mixologist, a historian, chef, or even a farmer, each person we meet adds a rich layer to the narrative of culture and place. In this podcast, we embark on a transformative journey where the focus goes beyond the typical tourist attractions. Instead, we dive deep into the hearts and souls of the places we visit uncovering the hidden gems and untold stories that make each destination truly unique. Join me as we venture off the beaten path, seeking authenticity, connection, and a deeper understanding of the world we inhabit. Together, we'll unravel the tapestry of cultures, one story at a time. Although my writing career began in the late 90s when I created and launched a wellness publication called Evolving Magazine, Since 2015, I've worked as a travel writer on a mission to seek out the locally celebrated foods, liquor trends, outdoor activities, and stories of those I meet along the way. My work has been published in Wine Enthusiast, Afar, Woman's World, First for Women, Insider, Road Trippers, Modern Farmer, Chilled Magazine, and many more digital and print publications. I'm also the creator of Global Plates, The People We Meet, The Food They Eat, a syndicated column. Creating this podcast is the next step in my journey of sharing the stories of the people I've met along the way. So pack your curiosity, leave your preconceived notions behind, and let's embark on Global Journeys with Jill Dutton, where each episode promises to inspire, educate, and awaken the wanderlust within us all. As we travel on this exciting podcasting journey together, I invite you, our incredible audience, to be a part of it. Share your own travel stories, insights, and recommendations with us. Whether you have a hidden gem in your hometown or a dream destination that has captured your imagination, we want to hear from you. Your suggestions will help shape the future episodes of Global Journeys with Jill Dutton, guiding us towards extraordinary locations and experiences that deserve a spotlight. Remember, this podcast is not about just the host or the guests. It's about the collective exploration and discovery that unites us all as wanderers in this vast world. 
So reach out to us through our website, social media channels, or email and let your voice be heard. Send your suggestions to me at jill at globaljourneyswithjilldutton.com. I can't wait to hear from you. Until next time, may your travels be filled with endless curiosity, open-hearted encounters, and transformative adventures. Safe travels, fellow explorers, and keep wandering.